Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tea Time Truth Talk with your host, Alicia, and my father, Rev Rich. And before we begin, I want to apologize for not being here last week. I was under the weather, but we are now better and back and ready to begin. And before we get begin, as always, subscribe, like, share, especially if the message we're talking about today is something somebody needs to hear. Um, hit that bell so you know anytime a video drops, no matter what part of our YouTube channel comes up. And as always, if you have comments or whatever thing, please reach out to us, questions, things like that, that we can help you with. Yep. And so today is a big one. And today we're going to call it body shaming. So the situation goes like this. My partner and I was going to a party, and as a surprise, I wore an outfit that I just bought on sale and wanted to show it off. But when I showed them, they said my stomach was out and I was showing too much skin. They told me I had to change because it made them uncomfortable. I got really upset because I am a plus-size woman and body shaming is all I've ever gotten, but I've loved who I am. When I asked why, they said some girls were making fun of me. They wouldn't tell me who it was, and now I just don't know what to do. Should I wear what I want or should I cover up? I don't know anything about body shaming. <laughs> Plus size forever. Like I... I mean, the joke is that, but yes, I mean, I've gone through many phases in my life. I mean, I look back and I was 13 years old wrestling for high school at 308. Now, some men aren't even that heavy, so think about it. I've been heavy all my life, you know, and even now I struggle with my weight. And shaming always comes down to one thing, and nobody wants to hear this part of it. It's all on us. It's us. It's not really the people around us. Because the one thing that I've learned in all my practices is that when somebody else insults us, says something or whatever, we have to believe it first before whatever they say. So the choice is actually ours. So in this person's case, if it is her partner or whatever that said, I don't like you wearing that because somebody made a comment, well, it's twofold there. He's embarrassed or she's embarrassed because of what he heard. And then he projects that on you. And then you're embarrassed because you believe it upon yourself. You know, I like to say, and again, we, as you can see, we have our Advent candles and we just lit the the advent that we're celebrating love this week is loving ourselves and people love to make excuses but when we say we love ourselves but then we insult ourselves afterwards it really isn't love we need to learn to accept who we are as we are now it doesn't mean that we have to stay here if we truly feel that our weight or whatever it is and we're talking about body shaming it doesn't even just mean weight and we kind of automatically go to the obese or to people who are heavy or whatever. Body shaming is also the flip side of that. Oh, yeah. You know, how many people we know who are so skinny and somebody will make a comment? I mean, I'm guilty of it. as like somebody needs to feed her or feed him <laughs> or something. So body shaming could take anything. It could be a color of hair, color of skin. It could be anything. But it's anytime something's different for some reason from a human perspective, we become afraid and it's easier to tear down than it is to build up. Mm -hmm. But the most important part of this is that we have to build ourselves up. You know, um, just putting my own business out there, you know, me and my daughter, we laugh about it, me doing these videos. Two years ago, you would never have seen me on a video. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to come to accept who I am, where I am at this moment, know that I can work towards something better for myself, not for you, not for anyone else around me, for me. And in that case, later on. But you know what? At the end of the day, regretfully, people will constantly, and again, not even just body shaming, but will constantly find something wrong with you mm -hmm. to build themselves up. So again, just quickly, when we're going back to this subject, you know, he or she is worried about you know, whether they should wear what they want. Yes, do what you want. Be what you want. You know, because at the end of the day, the only person that has to feel good is you. And I mean, mm -hmm. we talked about this earlier. You know, we look at Lizzo or we look at um, 
Oh, the model that you like. What's her name? Oh boy, that's terrible because she is one of my favorite models. Oh, because you introduced her to me. That's why. Oh, and gosh. yeah, you also have the book that you haven't read, but we won't go there. <laughs> I skimmed. <laughs> but no, I know my, my mind just went without her name. Oh my God. There's a bunch of them out there. And if you read her story, she was body shamed by many um, modeling agencies and then ended up on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. So, how many of those model agencies are now taking back? Notice now that it seems more accepting, you know, so, and you still have your haters out there. You still have people who can't because they don't want to be wrong. So I know I'm talking a lot here, but okay. it really is, you know, because I've experienced it. I mean, I've con all through high school, I was heavy all through that. Mm -hmm. You know, I hold multiple black belts where most people look at me like, there's no way you're a martial artist. You know, I taught a class and Regretfully, it broke apart because of my mental state at that point as far as what I was going through. But people saw me at heavy weights doing things that most people at a third of my weight couldn't do. That's very true. So a lot of times we put that out there, but we forget to look at what we accomplish. And that's how we begin to love ourselves. So at the end of the day, it's as I always say, anything outside of us never matters. It's what's inside of us, what we need to do for us because... In return, when we are the best we are, then we project to the people and give them permission to be the best they are. So you may be as heavy as I am, heavier, smaller, doesn't matter. And you may give permission to a skinny girl who says, you know, I'm too skinny. People always talk about it to say it's OK. If there's something underlying, take care of it, you know, be but do it for you. Don't do it for anybody outside, because the mo the one person who has to love you the most is you. Absolutely. I'm also going to exploit my stories as well um, because for this person who gave me this situation, they are in still in high school where, and the one thing I want them to know is for me, that was the a pit of me of body shaming, not only body shaming, coloring, the color of my skin, not coloring, <laughs> and things like that because in high school it was rough. I mean, when you walk into high school with freshman mindset you sometimes as a female maybe even a male um you have that mindset of i'm gonna get the good grades i'm gonna get the perfect boyfriend i'm gonna date i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that um i had that mindset and going through the high school i was in um i had a whole reality check because a lot of people especially guys um they didn't find me attractive because a couple reasons one my weight because i was too thick guys a lot of the guys preferred skinnier women and then when you go around and find the guys who do like thick girls they didn't like me because i was black because it was not something they're used to in the town we kind of live in it's more whites than blacks i mean now there's a, a lot more diversity than it was when we first moved here but um that was a big problem and then on top of that a lot of guys didn't like me because I wasn't that type of person who goes, help me, help me, I need the attention, help me, damsel in distress, or go around sleeping with everybody. I was the strong, independent one who got things done, who did things on my own, and if you were there and loved me for who I was and made me laugh, then I'll like you, not because you give me the attention and all that stuff. So it really is other people's opinions, but it took me a while to realize none of that matters especially once you graduate high school because let me tell you when you get that diploma in your hand that's it that's a wrap everything that happened in high school is in high school because i am more confident in myself i love myself i love the thick curves and the thick thighs and all that stuff i love the color of my skin i love my hair i love the way i look and it's a lot more empowering and you feel a lot better when you finally take that look in yourself in the mirror and you go, I love me, and you actually mean it. Like I said, high school is rough because sometimes you get all those outsiders and the naysayers and you want to fit in, but you want to stand out and you're still trying to find yourself in high school. But let me tell you, once high school's out and you become that adult and you step into adulthood, I'm still trying to be a child because I do not want to deal with bills and paperwork and jobs and because that's what's going to matter 
But taking care of yourself is also a big thing. And once you realize and you feel that love for yourself, it's an amazing experience. And then you just keep doing it over and over and over again. And I also learned with the love that I felt for myself, I felt more confident. And when I felt more confident, I was able to do more. And when I was able to do more, my path or my journey seemed to go more on a straight line to where I was heading, to the goals I want to go to. Um, we started our own YouTube channel. Um, I've become a confidence life coach. I'm a Reiki practitioner. Now, if you told freshman me or sophomore me that, I'd be like, what? What? What are you talking about? That doesn't make sense. We didn't want to do any of that. But I'm a singer. I'm this. I'm that. And I'm doing me. And that is the biggest important thing to always remember. Because you will, even as an adult, I'm not saying you won't hear the naysayers on the outside, but as an adult, you realize you will ignore it all. Yes, you'll have your advice here and there, or somebody will be like, well, I think those pants don't look right. Maybe you should try these pants. Like, you'll have those. But for people to be like, you're ugly, you're fat, your, co your skin color is wrong, that's, that's none of their business. Because at the end of the day, if you never met that person, or if that person moved, they can't affect you as if they're there right now. So. And that's the most important lesson, because, you know, I know there's a lot of you who watch this who are more in my daughter's age, and you heard, well, once I'm out of high school, but let me tell you from my experience, you know, I'm just a young 51-year-old. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you get out of high school, college tends to be the same thing. You know what I'm saying? You go into the work world, you're going to have the exact same thing. You know, I have experienced things in the work world where people will come and sit there and start talking about other people and how these people, and I'm looking at them like, where was the invitation to come here and start with this haterade, as they used to say, mm -hmm. or stuff like that? I don't want to hear it. You know, tell me how beautiful that person is. Tell me the good works they do. Celebrate them in some way. Don't come tell me your drama because you need to overcome something inside of yourself and that's something you want to remember when i talk about empathy it's putting yourself in that person's shoes and that's something that's a tool that you can take forward with you is that you already expect that you know somebody may say something about you and all that but at the end of the day you form that first opinion of yourself and it's if you believe that opinion then everybody else's opinion is going to matter if it matches the derogatory that you have for yourself but if you can empathize with that person and say, okay, obviously that person is hurting because he needs to hurt me. And I feel sorry for you. You know, I'm a unity minister, so we do more affirmative prayers as opposed to traditional prayers. But, you know, when I'm driving, I, I, this is just an off topic thing. But if I'm driving and somebody starts coughing, cutting me off or speeding past me or God forbid almost hit me and they're in a rush or whatever, normally I used to get upset and curse that person out. Now I empathize and I say, well, obviously there was a need for that person to be driving in that way or speeding in that way. So I affirm for him safety and peace in whatever it is. And God forbid if somebody's sick he's rushing to or something going on, that, that, may, that he may find love, peace, and happiness instead, and that he may reach his destination as safely as possible. And you can do the exact same thing. So when somebody body shames you or says something, you don't have to say it out loud, but you could just say it in your heart. Just say, hey, you know, obviously that person's in pain and they need to project that pain on me. So I affirm for them peace and love in their heart so that he may in turn learn love and peace for others. Because at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it, it sounds cruel and I hate to say it, you know what, I don't want to say I hate to say it, but it sounds cruel to most people, but it is 100% true. If some, if everyone around me died right now, I would still have to live. So it means I need to be the best person I can be to take care of me. And when I take care of me, then I can be the best person to share me with other people. That's absolutely true. And the one thing that I do want to point out or say as well is that even though, like, especially if you're in high school and you've seen this video and things like that, if you can love yourself even before you get out of high school, 
you ahead of the ball game. You yeah. way ahead of the ball game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But um, a couple of things that I think would help because it's like we talk about loving yourself and things like that. But the one thing we, uh, one thing that I've learned or I've seen with other people and including myself is that the action is also important. So it's like, yes, you look at yourself, you affirmative, like you, one of the actions you do do is, like he said, affirmative prayer. So you get up in the morning and the first thing you do is you look at yourself in the mirror and go, I'm beautiful, I'm strong, I'm independent. And you do that on a constant. After a while, I mean, it's not like you want to start believing it, but it will grind in your brain to the point that you can see that. Another thing is self-care is very important because when we feel ugly or when we feel out of place, it's because we're not giving ourselves the self-care. So take that shower with fancy soaps or whatever. Go out and buy yourself a new outfit. Hell, change your whole wardrobe if you want to. Try makeup. Don't try makeup. Do different things. And when you find that style or that, that way of life that makes you feel confident, go with it. Because that will also give you a boost of feeling the love in yourself as well as because again you can love yourself on the inside but you can also learn how to love yourself on the outside as well and sometimes that couple changes and finding who you are on the outside as well as the inside will give you a better perspective of how you can love yourself and i'll leave you with this last tool as well is live on purpose you know kind of coming off of what alicia just said is be on purpose. Now, I know with COVID and everything else, we've all become houseboat. I mean, I just spent three years working from home and I'm about to take a remote job at Silent Unity mm -hmm. working from home. But that doesn't mean that I don't get up, shower, put on some cologne, you know, put on a dress shirt or put on a, a shirt or t-shirt. It doesn't matter. It's about, can I work in my PJs as they say? Sure. But then I don't feel up and I don't feel alive. And especially when you're in a leadership position, you need to exude that to others. So when you think about it, you're the leader of your own life. So when you get up on purpose, you know, put on something that makes you feel good. Take a shower, as my daughter said, you know, with things that make you feel alive. You know, if you're a makeup person, you know, you put on your makeup, even if it is just you being home, you know, even if it is you know, just sitting, you know, self-care. You know, one day, I think it was the one of the first days that I was here by myself, my daughter and my wife went out shopping and I had music going. I had a book in my hand. Then the cat decided it wanted to live on my chest, you know. But between all of that, I was in a peaceful mode that nothing could touch me. So live on purpose. Second tool I will give you if you are listening to this is go back a day and watch my Meditation Monday. Um, I was featured in a book about teen meditation and I have a self-love meditation that I wrote that was featured in that book, which I am doing for Meditation Monday this week because of the week of love. And it talks about, it's a visualization based on seeing yourself broken in broken mirrors and breathing those mirrors back to life to see the true beauty in yourself. So utilize that as well. Visualization is a great thing. You know, I spent many years, as I said, heavy, but I always visualized myself dressing well, doing well, being whatever. And I realize now that even without ever formally being trained to do those things at that point, that that's what actually kept whatever level of confidence I had back then to be able to be around people and do the things I did. And, and trust me when I say as adults, we tend to forget to do those things. And then we end up regressing back to what you say was suffering in high school is us suffering in our midlife or whatever, because we're not confident in what we do, you know? And then there's a book that I love. It's like, feel the fear, do it anyway. There's also some colorful words I can use, but we won't because then I have to mark this explicit and it's a whole big thing. <laughs> <laughs> so. But, um, so I think we've been rambling on enough. <laughs> so honestly, in summary, Learn to love yourself, self-care, live with purpose. And for the situation itself, um, it would be great if your partner watched this as well, because I'm pretty sure there's some things that they can learn from this as well, so that they don't feel the need to tell you what you can or not wear. But even without their opinion or not, wear what you want, do what you want, live how you want to live. 
And with that, as always, we love, love you, you and there's nothing, nothing you can, can do about it. it. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>